second day of vlogging, Desiree. Today we're going Louisiana uh, Louisiana Museum. Let's hope the trains are working. Yeah. Well, how are you feel? How are you feeling after the first day? Exhausted from nearly. 20 kilometers walking over 20 kilometers over we walked 20, 20 kilometers, kilometers. okay guys then uh, let's see if the danish infrastructure of uh, railway problems. yeah let's hope to get there first coffee of the day the interiors here are super amazing in every single coffee have a real taste minimalist design but really cool i'm really impressed with danish design i gotta say the interiors are awesome here we go again we are back to the station and allegedly in 14 minutes we should be able to catch the train and finally visit the maritime museum in copenhagen and the louisiana museum let's hope let's see if we're gonna get there Here we go, we arrived in Helsingor. Uh, as you can see in the background there, there is the castle. And next to the castle, or right next to the castle, you will we'll go to visit the Marta Museum. So let's check it out. Let's see how it is one of the first old school Bjorki Ingels projects. So guys, one super interesting thing here is that we are very close to Sweden. Here you could get the ferry and you can go to Sweden within a few minutes because on the background what you see in the distance there yeah this is Sweden you can get this ferry and uh, you can get to Sweden here we see this really really cool ship I don't know it exactly what is the purpose I think you can go on it and there is a bar there are people probably they do some sort of excursions and here we're getting closer to the castle and uh, I guess over there somewhere is the museum here I am architecture super cool architecture you don't notice you're arriving at the museum until you're not here in the real last moment uh, the museum is closed it's gonna be opened in uh, 10 minutes uh, you can see again how the use of architecture it's way different the architectural photography for example they have all this decoration along the along the, the glass and uh, you go down that slope you slope down towards the entrance and then you get in here but also uh, you can go down these stairs, I guess. It smells a lot like sea, I gotta say. It's the perfect spot for a maritime museum. But you can see we're going to the reverse Titanic moment. Um, and here we are. This is, I think, one of the most spectacular shots we can get <sighs> yeah you can see it's pretty cool here we are going to the stair and the stair it's also really funny you see it's like not a straight stair it's like slightly tilted somehow uh, I don't know what is the geometrical reason for that. I guess because it starts from not a straight point and it arrives at a straight point. So it's kind of slightly tilted. There you can see the entrance. You can, I don't know if you can hear, but there's water falling down. You can, it's, I don't know, it smells like sea. You hear a lot of water and you're at this sort of reversed ship form. So. I think it's kind of cool. Here you can see the famous auditorium. Uh, again, steps, sitting steps, sitting chairs. It is pretty, pretty cool. And here there is some funny decoration with the seaman t-shirts. We are finally managing to enter the museum. The pavement is cool. It's not uh, slippery. It's very nice metal very well foreseen in case of i mean here's quite wet it's always windy rainy i think these are images that you have never seen before because we don't see the entrance taking pictures of there is our 
nose of the of the museum and uh, we are entering finally the museum of York Ingalls and it's nice and warm inside here. We managed to enter the museum. Uh, you go through a shop and then all the rooms of the museum are beneath the sides of the dock where they were used to build the ship. So this is a curiosity because the competition brief of uh, the competition was to build a museum inside the dock, but Björk Ingels group decided to build it around it uh, by breaking the rules uh, of, um, of the competition. Uh, but in the end, uh, so he didn't win the competition. Uh, somebody else won the competition, but in the end, the client decided to build this uh, building. And uh, it's now more or less a kids museum. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, you can see, uh, let me show you. There are this sort of exposition for, for kids with books. Yeah, it's everything done sort of like a submarine ship. So yeah, it's, let's check it out. I'll show you the more architecty, architecturally part of the building. We can see the first part of the bridge beneath the bridge. Uh, now we are walking basically in this first bridge that connects, connects the, the two sides of the dock. In this bridge over there, we have the kids' corner. So guys, this is a very interesting room. It's dedicated to the Tannebrock. Uh, that's the royal yacht. It's sort of the yacht force one of Denmark, where the royal family uh, strolls around. It's uh, it's, it, you have to imagine that Danish people are very connected to the sea because back in the days Greenland was part of Denmark, Iceland, the Faroe Island. Uh, so here there is a, an entire room dedicated to this royal yacht. And uh, you can see a model here of, of this yacht. It is um, pretty cool. So basically the royalty in charge is also the captain of this yacht so who rules the yacht rules the country and this dude here you can see he is a pretty cool guy because he was the king of denmark frederick IX. he was uh, tattooed this is uh, an edition of life magazine and uh, somebody leaked the pictures back in the days um, and he had this pretty badass tattoos and they allegedly were leaked by his personal trainer. So I think this is a cool story to share. In the middle of the exposition we have this super cool piece of jewelry. And here guys we are in another room full of these ship models from different Danish ships and we are getting in the other bridge. So here we have the combination of this shipyard exposition and we are beneath the back of the ship and here you can find or better say the shipyard and here we are in the coffee where the other stair goes down yeah let's go to see how it is the room beneath here we have some second world war section where they show the torpedo in how many ships were sunk by Germans during World War I and uh, World War II. 
Uh, several models again. We see ship mines. Um, here we can see the guns that they were used to mount on the ships to protect themselves. So, yeah, unfortunately this is something that's very, very actual today. And here we see all the medals that you could get by the Royal Navy in Denmark. Uh, footage from Second World War and barrels and we're getting to the area where there is the auditorium. As the only architectural nerd in the museum right now, I'm the only one going to check this area here. So this is the stage here. You can get to the different... It smells like wood also. This is the auditorium with the different chairs. They're fixed. Here is the other bridge of the dock. Again, glass mullions of the facade and I'm going upstairs to see what it is up here. <sighs> Super. It smells like wood in here. It's the first time I don't smell like sea stuff. And I guess uh, here you can see there is a exposition about the architect Bjorke Ingels. These are the pages that are very much in the Yes is More style where he explains the concept of the building and the project. A model of the building where you can actually see how it was developed. We are basically in this bridge here and we are walking around the dock so you can see all the rooms they're here you can see everything is like this it's like metal um, and uh, so funny this is the shopping area the toilets you can see everything in the model in here, I think they kind of ruined a little bit the model, but here is where we have the reverse Titanic moment, the big dock. Oh, what could it be if you only change one letter? Always this irony. I think if they called it that way, it's a, I don't know, Danish humor, like the website of Big DK. Okay guys, I'm back here where you can see this crazy big model of this cargo ship, the mask. You can see what the fuck, it's so huge. And this is just a model, I don't know what scale, but uh, yeah, the famous shipping company. Here guys, we are at the end of the exposition. Um, so there is another kids corner. And you can see we have again these sort of steps. I think they remind a lot like the nose of a ship or something similar, you know? Like, uh, or they have to follow the shape, I guess, of the slope that goes around the museum. Um, here we have this super interesting glass facade that has no mullions at all. I think it's just hanging on that metal, metal element. It's really cool, really cool. The whole museum reminds uh, somehow of a ship, has a slightly a slope. Here you can see that this part of the museum looks like really like the nose of a ship. And this stair looks like sort of the water moving. At least this is my interpretation. One really cool feature of the dock is that here on the top it's really windy but you can go inside the dock of the museum and just have your lunch and you can see that there it's way less windier than here. So here you got the big stair and you can go down from here inside the dock and then in the cafe. So I think it's a pretty cool thing. And from here you can see that the museum is basically invisible. Leaving the museum it was cool, definitely worth visiting. Let's see if we can manage to visit a little bit of the castle. And then we're heading to the Louisiana Museum. Also a very cool museum, suggested by a lot of people. We'll be filming more 
We just got off the train and we're walking towards the Louisiana Museum. The area looks really, I don't know, you wouldn't expect that there is a museum here. It's like a residential area in some suburb village of Copenhagen. But apparently this museum should be really cool. After, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes walk, we finally arrived at the entrance of the museum. Let's see how it is going to be. It looks really cool, really deep in nature. So we are getting in. We are at the entrance of the museum and it is this really cool green facade. Uh, we gotta let our cards being scanned now. So let's see how it works. Guys, we're starting to check the exhibition. We were for a little break in the garden because visiting all this stuff is really exhausting. Uh, by the way, I'm noticing my bar is growing well here. Um, yeah, so this is the Louisiana Museum of, I think, contemporary modern art. And the museum itself is really beautiful. Um, it is completely um, immersed in nature. So let's go check it out. You can see how the museum goes on one side with art. And on the other side, it is total nature. It's always immersed in nature completely. You can see how beautiful are the wooden planks on the ceiling and uh, this uh, terracotta floor. Uh, we're going in the next area. Desiree is breaking already the jalousies which are out of wood, aren't they?
of museums and exhaustion. We came back to the city. There is a nice warm sun for the first time. And for the first time, I'm not experiencing the wind. And we came to Israel's Platz, another Copenhagen cool place to see, designed by Kobe. So I'm gonna turn, on, uh, turn around the camera so that you guys can see downtown Copenhagen. And here there are basketball fields. Uh, there is a park on the other side. I'm gonna go big angle so that you can see more. So yeah, like this is the square and there are everywhere these cool steps where you can uh, basically sit. Uh, you see over there. Um, so I think this square is going to be aging way better than the other one that we saw yesterday from Big because the materials are all like kind of very natural and here this black surface is something softy I don't know what it exactly it's some sort of rubber and there you can see that you have this sort of uh, stages uh, or not stages here's like the stage and and you can sit there and look over and they're like skate park stuff so you see the guys are skating uh, playing soccer playing uh, basketball it's really really cool it's a really cool uh, place and on the other side of the square where you see those sort of uh, buildings those are like food holes so inside there you find all these different cool street food shops uh, for example we just had some empanadas in between before we go to dinner and um, yeah we were too exhausted to do something after the Louisiana Museum because it was super big and um, yeah, so we decided to come back to, like, we were planning to come back to the city and uh, because it's right next to the, basically, main station, which is Nordepurt, um, we decided why not to chill a little bit, sit here, check. So, and these are, like, you see, in between the protection, there is a gap where you can enter and uh, try to dunk or to play just a little bit of soccer and here you can see that the people got something from the there's a supermarket or they got something from the from the food hall uh, or food court food yard i don't know what you want to call it and um yeah they're having food i i really like this this place um i don't know maybe here they should have plant a little bit more trees but I don't know what is the use of the square all over the, the year <clears throat> we're getting to one of my favorite projects you can see down there coming out of the corner Kroje Platz also designed by Kobe really cool inspired by local architecture and uh, you can see how the three buildings are made out of bricks and terracotta and there are green roofs and they look like warehouses but also like local architecture I think it's really really awesome how it looks like from the outside I think that some of the apartment layouts are not so cool but you can check that online on websites like Arc Daily you can find also floor plans but let's check it out how it looks like from outside here we see the first building that's the back side and it forms this sort of square with the other building so here is the public square I was telling you about um, so the front of this building and this building and this third building are forming this public square and in between the two buildings here we have also this sort of green space public space in between uh, it looks really nice and 
this other that's oh my god it looks awesome it looks really really cool you can walk through it and it says not to grill not to smoke not to pee so guys if you come here don't pee and uh, yeah it looks super awesome you can just walk through I don't know why they put this metal barrier that's the only downside but it looks amazing the outside in here you can see you can walk through these buildings where you get this super mirroring inside of the of the buildings there are the entrances so you're all instagrammy and mirrory and you get through and you are on the water on the other side you can see they're building behind those warehouses paper island uh, there is one of the most famous bridges here you can see the opera house so i think it's a pretty awesome area people jogging on the water and there they are the sitting steps where you can have a rest uh, the rooftop is really beautiful it's like all green it looks like those old copenhagen or those old like viking houses i can imagine and yeah i think the whole project builds a very beautiful plot and it's a very beautiful conversation between the past the warehouses and the new i think kobe has a very way very nice way to translate modern um, past danish architecture into modern danish architecture here by far we have the best view i'm right on the um, dock where you can get on a boat and you can see the whole building it's super cool um, I, I mean from here you cannot see it but i love the material that repeats on the facade and uh, i love that black facade that looks like something has been cutting through this outer outer cover and on the other side of the dock you can see paper island is being built also from kobe architects so if you ever come to denmark and if you ever come to copenhagen i warmly recommend you to visit this place because it's really really cool and awesome